Well, a dream became true. From dream to reality, great achievements. Thank you so much. Now I would like to give the floor for His Excellency, Dr. Gitahon Mekori, the Minister of Science and Technology from Ethiopia. Your Excellency. Your Royal Highness, Princess Dr. El Shamai, uh, Honorable Minister Dr. Elena Dali, let me start by congratulating you for a very successful and well taught conference of the third International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Uh, I'm very much impressed uh, by the events and agendas and points raised yesterday and today uh, on issues of bringing the large majority of humanity, that's women and girls, into the arena of science and technology. And as a minister for science and technology of my country, uh, it's uh, one of the best, one of the closest agenda to my heart and I'm very much honored to be part of this event and uh, very much honored to represent my country Ethiopia in this very important event. Um, uh, let me start uh, so with some conclusive remarks and uh, through those conclusive remarks I would share the experience of my country. Uh, this agenda of bringing women and uh, girls into science and technology, I very much believe, and we in Ethiopia, the government, very much believe that this agenda should be laid by government. Mm -hmm. uh, not only leading, but also uh, governments should own this agenda of ensuring the appropriate placement of our mothers and sisters into the field of science and technology. Um, let me give you some examples of what we are doing in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, uh, there is uh, what we call the Council of Science, Technology and Innovation. And this council is being led by His Excellency, our Prime Minister. So the issue of science, technology and innovation in Ethiopia is uh, critically important and is one of the highest agenda of our government. That's why our Prime Minister leads the Science, Technology and Innovation Council of Ethiopia. That means that uh, higher bodies, uh, higher officials, government uh, leaders, presidents, prime ministers, if they lead the council and the body deciding on science, technology and innovation, it means that government gives the highest priority when it comes to science, technology, and innovation. One of the uh, policies of Ethiopia that really has uh, started to bear fruit, which I'll come to explain at a later stage, is what we call the 70-30 policy in Ethiopia. Uh, for the last more than a decade, uh, the 70-30 policy stands for 70% of Ethiopian university students go in the area of science and technology. And 30% of all Ethiopian university students and colleges and uh, TVATs, 30% of them go to the social sciences, humanities and language studies, whereas 70% of them go in the direction of science and technology. Why I'm raising this question, or this point? So when we say, um, girls, women and girls in science, there must be some catchment area, the policy framework and the strategy framework of the country itself very much determines whether our agenda of girls and, science, girls and women in science would be successful or not. So in Ethiopia, the, the, the policy of science and the technology itself is very sound and very strong. That means that the human resource development in science and technology uh, uh, is, is very strong. That means that when we talk about the agenda of girls and women in science and technology, then it, it is the best environment we are creating at the level of policy and strategies. So 
with this 70-30 policy, 70% 70 of all Ethiopian universities going, you know, univer going to universities are in the areas of science and technology. There is another uh, resolution also which ensures 30% of all engineering and technology students are female students in universities. So yes, compared with other countries, 30 percent is not that big, but it shows the determination of the government to ensure that at least 30 percent of university students in the area of engineering and technology are female. In some science areas like health sciences, uh, the number is very much bigger, uh, more than 40, 42 percent are uh, female students. So uh, the, the other point I want, I want to uh, explain here is we in Ethiopia also give a very strong support to what, what we call SWIST. SWIST stands for Society of Women in Science and Technology, which is a society of researchers and university professors in the area of science and technology. So this SWIST, the Society of Women in Science and Technology, through this society, we encourage uh, women researchers. We give them trainings. We always organize them as much as possible. We encourage research, female researchers in the area of science and technology. One of the challenges we face uh, as we go into this, as we implement this policy, is that still the number of researchers in area of science and technology is, is, is yet to be uh, strengthened. So through this society, we encourage science scientists, female scientists, and professors to do researches and also to uh, be able to contribute in the area of science and technology. One other uh, intervention we do at government level is to set aside research funds exclusively for female researchers and female scientists. So uh, in Ethiopia currently we have different research institutes, especially our research institutes in agriculture and health areas is relatively stronger. So every year government is uh, providing up to 200,000 USD per project and up to 20 projects per year in the area of science and technology and also in areas of research that directly contribute to uh, economy and social affairs of the country. So this research fund, the female scientists are, uh, we, we, we put aside a minimum of 20% of this research exclusively for female uh, scientists and researchers. So in addition to their freedom to compete for the remaining 80% with their f uh, male colleagues, so uh, in addition to that one we provide exclusively a 20% of Ethiopian research funds to uh, female scientists. The other intervention, intervention we are doing, as we uh, witness today, uh, when it comes to science for girls and women, the best time to start intervention is as early as possible. So that means that in the general education, high schools and elementary schools, there are what we call science clubs that encourage uh, talented, innovative, young boys and girls as, as such. So oh, through, so, through these uh, early interventions at high schools and elementary schools, government tries to bring up the understanding and the knowledge of science and technology to all uh, Ethiopian youngs and boys. So the, the issue of Science, the issue of girls and women in science is we directly connect to our economic growth. As, as, as I said earlier, the economic development of uh, Ethiopia is very much determined by the population of scientists and engineers we have and also the number of graduates, the proportion of graduates in the area of science and technology. That's why government has decided that 70% of graduates from universities, European universities and tertiary education should be in the area of uh, science and technology. Additionally, we also believe that the, 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 the sustainability and continuation of our economic growth is very much linked 
to the proportion of female scientists and engineers we have in the in the market and in in the economy. So uh, I'm very much honoured to to witness what has been uh, discussed and deliberated uh, these two days. But to uh, to summarise the intervention of government and the decision and the policy and the strategy of governments in the area of science and technology is the most important and a critical point to make successful the agenda of women and girls in science and technology. Your Royal, Your, Your Royal Highness, I'm very much thankful for inviting Ethiopia into this uh, event and thank you very much, Your Royal Highness.